So the past weekend, I was browsing the internet for some valuable content for me to absorb and ended up on this blog. It's called The Thrift Benign. I'll put the link of her blog in the description box down below. Uh, there's a lot of good written content in the blog site, niya, but there's one blog that really resonates with me and it's, it's, it's entitled 5 Effective Ways to Leave Below Your Means Without Feeling Deprived. And the reason why it really resonates with me is because I also received a comment asking me the same question. This video is a request I got from Anne Bernal Antaso. So the question niya is, as a working student, what to focus on financially while not depriving myself of the things that I want? How to? I'd love to see a video dedicated to people like us who study and work at the same time. Thank you, heart. Hard. I remember yung sabit ko dito sa question na to is about taking a mindset na minsan talaga there will be times na isasacrifice mo yung fun things na instead na gamitin mo yung money on some fun things i-discipline mo yung sarili mo to save that money because you know na it will be more satisfying and worth it if you spend that money in the future na mas valuable yung paggagamitan mo ng money mo That was an emotional approach for me which just stands correct para sa akin But today let's discuss it on a more technical and step-by-step -step way using yung article that I read last week It's from Amin aka the Tref Pinay. So you should definitely check her blog after you watch this video. All credits to her, so maraming magandang content on her blog site. Her article started by differentiating thriftiness from deprivation. So how she defines thriftiness is getting the same value but you have to pay lower while not getting miserable. While deprivation, nangyayari lang to if uh, yung pagtitipid mo or yung thrift strategy mo uh, makes you miserable. So yun lang yung difference netong dalawang to. With that said, let's begin with tip number one. Number one on this list is set up a play fund. But before we begin discussing play fund, let's discuss muna yung story ng author because that is connected to the play fund. So when she was a fresh grad starting to work, yung pinakaunan niyang goal is to save her first 100,000. So in the beginning, meron daw siya natabing 20,000. So kailangan niya nalang mag-save ng 80,000. But in order for her to do that, kasi nga yung sweldo niya lang is a little bit over the minimum wage, kailangan niya sobrang pagtitipid and sobrang pagsasacrifice in order to hit that goal in one year. I forced myself into deprivation diet for financially speaking. I quit shopping, didn't eat outside, tried my hardest to walk to work and back home, resisted party nights, and my social life just to avoid unnecessary expenses. This happened for a few weeks and then suddenly, boom, I exploded. She went to the mall and became a one-day millionaire and spent more than half of what she earned. So yun, the lesson there is not to deprive yourself. Instead, mag-set ka ng specific budget mo na pwede mong gasosin sa sarili mo where you could enjoy for yourself and that is what you call a play fund. So every payday, a lot of portion of your salary to your play fund. And yes, it is a must to spend it, but don't overspend more than that. Number two on her list is to set a smart financial goal. So this is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Now let's use yung goal ko for the year para may idea kayo how to set your own smart financial goals. Now the system doesn't only work for your finances, but it also for your fitness and other stuffs. First, you have to set your goals very specific. For me, I wanted to add 50,000 to the money system ko by the end of the year. And for my YouTube channel, I wanted to gain 1,000 subs by the middle of the year. So that's by the end of June. You have to keep your goal measurable and keep track of it. So para sa akin, I already saved 16,000 na. So I'm almost 40% na done for my target. And for my YouTube channel, meron na 900 plus subscribers. So I'm 90% done na. So I'll probably hit it a bit earlier. You also have to set your goals attainable. So dito, you just have to be honest with yourself. So para sa akin, yung 4,200 savings each month, uh, I couldn't probably make it like parang 4,200 every month. But yung average, I would probably hit it. So attainable yun para sa akin. And then yung YouTube channel, channel ko, it hovers from 80 to 120 new subs each month. So yun, parang attainable din para sa akin yung goal na sinet ko. Another thing you have to set is your goal must be relevant. So ibig lang sabihin nito kung gano'n ba ka-importante sa'yo yung goal mo. So for me, it really matters because the more invested you are into your goal, the more likely na ma-achieve mo yung goal mo. So for me, yung 50,000 na money na additional dun sa money system ko, it's uh, an extended runway para sa akin. Or kaya naman potential capital na pwede ako mag-make ng profit. And yung 1,000 subs, para sa akin, it will unlock a new small stream of income in the future pwedeng lumaki yun. And most importantly para sa akin, it will allow me to parang uh, meet 
a small step na pwede pala akong magkaroon ng future career dito na alam mo yun, you could uh, be happy doing it and at the same time it, it will provide for your expenses. Lastly, time bound. So ito, simple lang. Just set a target date or deadline for you to be motivated and to keep you committed na parang dun sa progress mo in order for you to highly achieve yung goal mo. Third on her list is tracking your expenses. So for me, what it does, it allows you to get a bigger picture of where your money goes. And if possible, matatrack mo or mapipinpoint mo kung ano pa yung pwede mong bawasan sa mga ginagasos mo. For me, these are like side mirrors and rear mirrors dun sa kotse natin. It allows us to gain extra vision dun sa mga subtle, minute, yung mga hindi natin masyadong napapansin na part ng lives natin, ng finances natin that could be very impactful in our lives. Fourth on this list is delayed gratification. This is something that I mentioned in past videos before, but how the author defines it is it's about giving something you badly want for something better in the future. This is just plain and simple. So instead of indulging yourself with unhealthy foods, diba, kumain ka ng more healthy foods, instead na magpakatamad ka sa bahay, try to exercise, instead na maglive ka ng fancy life, try to live a more modest lifestyle, trust me, you'll take yourself later in the future. Delayed gratification is like paying for an expensive entry price with a guarantee of huge returns in the future. Last and most important is the fulfillment curve. So how I understood this is finding what's enough for you and anything more than that is too much na. A good example that she used is she was invited into four beach trips during one summer and she just settled for two. And yung reason niya behind that, behind that is because uh, if she go if she went for four, feeling niya uh, sobra na yung para sa kanya. It's too much spending and too much spoiling of herself. Plus, if she pushed for four, alam mo yung iba doon, hindi niya na may enjoy kasi sobra mapapagod na sila. It's about finding what's enough. One thing that I'd like to add personally is law of diminishing returns. So how I could explain it to you is uh, there will be a point na spending much money won't make you happier anymore. So let me just draw it for you para mas maintindihan nyo. From here to here, the amount of happiness you gain is proportional to the money you spend. But past this point, spending more money won't make much difference to your happiness so the sweet spot is at this point. That's it for this video. Go check out her blog. This is not sponsored or anything. I just really find value dun sa blog niya and I wanted to share it to more people. Housekeeping na lang. Please don't forget to hit the like button and I'm almost close to hitting my 1,000 subs na goal. So any new subscriber will be a huge help. If you're already a subscriber, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If wala ka masabi, just leave an emoji representing what you felt towards this video. That's it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye! If you like this video, my personal recommendation for you to watch next is this video. It's called 3 Ways to Spend Less Money. So, lalabas siya dito sa screen. If you haven't watched it yet, just stop it. So, yun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye!